Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we can rejoice because we're glad in it. We praise God for his goodness and his mercy toward us. So we thank him that he woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right mind, and gave us a thirst and a hunger for more of him. You tuned in to Feed My Sheep Ministry Church of God in Christ, and today we're in our Sunday school, International Sunday School, where we go with believers around the world studying the same topic so that we will be on one accord, the body of Christ united in him, in his word. Our topic on today is the people gave thanks to God. We're going to begin with prayer and then our facilitator, excuse me, our international Sunday school teacher, as is her newly proclaimed title, missionary Cherie Lewis will be teaching us today. We're depending on God to speak through her yes, and yes. to us. And we're joined by her companion, Elder Maurice Lewis, who is also an awesome teacher of the Word of God. And we just thank God for this opportunity. I am Pastor Mary Washington, servant of the Most High God and servant to the people of God worldwide. And we're delighted that you chose to be here on today. We're going to ask Elder Lewis if he would open up this morning with a prayer praying for people around the world and that they would hear this word and be thankful unto God. And then we'll go into our Sunday school lesson. Mm. Father, we come thanking you this morning. Thank you, we come Lord. glorifying you and magnifying you and lifting you up, Father, yes, because yes, you're yes, worthy yes, to yes, be Lord. praised. You're we worthy, thank you, Lord. Father, for allowing us to stay another day in the land of the living. Yes, yes, we thank, thank you, Father, that all of our needs are met according to your riches and glory yes, by Christ yes. Jesus. Thank you, Father, as we go forth in the service today, Father, yes. asking all of the praying for all of those that are listening on today, yes, those yes, that are yes, here and old, yes, those that are over the airways, Father, yes, that you would give us an ear to hear your word on yes, today, God, Father. Yes, and yes. not just hear it, Father, but allow us to apply it in our lives, Father, yes, according yes. to your word, your will, and your way, Father. Yes, and Father, we're asking that you have your way, Father, praying yes, for yes, Pastor yes, Washington, and praying yes, for uh, missionary Lewis praying yes, for yes, all instructors this morning around the yes, world, Father, yes, that are going yes, forth in the word on today, Father. Yes. And Father, we give you all the glory, all the glory and we give you all the praise. You yes. have your way. Have in your Jesus' way. name, amen. amen. Amen, amen. We do thank God for each and every one of you that here on the sound of my voice, yes. those that are here in the edifice as well as those that are over the airways. Thank we do God. thank God for this is truly the day that he has made. Yes. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We have an awesome lesson today. Yes. The lesson topic is the people gave thanks to God. What a wonderful follow-up to the previous lesson, which we talked, there is no God like you. Amen. And you know, it's just awesome because it's a continuation. On last you. week, we see that so uh, Solomon is in the process of doing a, get a dedication of the temple that God allowed him, appointed him to build for him, yes. for him to put uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, which holds the covenant of God for his people yes. in. Yes. And as a uh, result of David, his uh, Solomon's father's desire. Amen. And we thank God for that. That God Amen. is mindful Amen. of us. You know, Amen. God looks at the heart of man. Where yeah. we as people, we look at everything else. But yeah. God looks at the heart. He knows the purity of each and every one of us. Yeah. And so it's just an awesome lesson. And so to, think, to talk about thanking God for being God and he alone is an awesome way. <laughs> awesome lesson to follow up with. Amen. Uh, the scriptures in between last week, we talked from Second Chronicles 6, 1 through 21. And today we're going to Chron Second Chronicles 7, 1 through 11. But in between there, we find that uh, Solomon prays to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And his prayer included that the people will hear you, will turn to you. Yes. And if they should yes. sin, that they will repent yes. and turn to you and never sin again. Oh. Now, that's my interpretation of mm -hmm. it. But that's ultimately what he was praying to God. And, that yes. they, and if they make a determination, if they get off track mm -hmm. and they repent... And they pray towards this Jerusalem, which you have appointed, mm -hmm. and this, this temple, which you have given me authority to build. That's right. Hear them yes. and yes. forgive them and allow them to be uh, to return to you. And, you right. know, that's just a wonderful thing to know that even this, like now, intercessory prayer, we don't give much credence to today. That's true. And it's a necessary thing that we intercede on one another's behalf. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the next person experienced. Even if we're sitting there watching things happening, we don't know the experience that each individual is having. That's true, right. man. Okay. But we can speak to the things that we see. Mm -hmm. But many times, it may not be expedient to do that either. And so we have to hear God.
God and do what he say do as he say do it. And I just really wanted to just kind of open up the floor and give uh, Pastor Washington and Elder Lewis an opportunity to say something about the title and before we get deep into this lesson. The two things I want to say before we go there is this. We are still talking about the goodness and faithfulness of God. Yes, yes. And we're also reminded of David's legacy that has Amen. been exemplified through his son, Solomon. Amen. 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 I was also thinking about the fact that we're in our subject um, for the for the quarter of acknowledging God. Yes. And even early on this morning as I was uh, preparing to come to service, I started thinking about the goodness of God and the mercies of God and how I can't do anything worthwhile without him because yes. he's an awesome God. You know, sometimes it's just as you spoke earlier, we take things for granted. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is we cannot take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, except the Lord gives us strength in our body. We're not able to walk. We're not able to talk. We're not able to lift our hands. There are many things that we would be disabled to do if it wasn't for the Lord on our side. Amen. And so as I look at our topic today, the people gave thanks to God. The people. Some of the messages that I'm preaching this morning talks about the people. Mm -hmm. In fact, several times in my notes, I wrote down the people. Because what happens is, it comes back to us. Yes. Accepting what God has done. See, it begins with God. Yes. But then it comes to us. And then whatever the end result is, it ends with God. Mm -hmm. Now, God is there all in between. But we can never think it's just God. We've got to realize that we play an important part in our own life, in our That's relationship right. with God. You know, when you say, the people gave thanks to God. This means that people willingly glorified God. It's not just a matter of saying, thank you, Lord, like we do. Yeah. Uh, or if we do when we're prompted. Right. But it's a matter of having a heartfelt desire to worship the Lord. No holds barred. Well, nobody can stop you. Amen. Nobody can stop you because it's your worship. However, some of the things that Solomon prayed for the people help us to understand how the people can run interference. That's right. With that worship that they say they're giving to God. That's right. Because if they go into sin, if they go into anything contrary to God, this is why Solomon is making intercession for them, because he knows they cannot come into his presence with the filth, the sin, the ungodliness, anything that, that's on them. So this is a very powerful, powerful lesson because Amen. it speaks volumes and then it infers so much more as you get an understanding of what's really going on. That's right. Amen. 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 <clears throat> when I looked at the topic, is, uh, you mentioned, you said the word once or twice, Pastor Washington, the word worship. Mm -hmm. And I began to think about the uh, discipleship class that we had this past Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And in that class, again, talking about uh, giving, saying yes to God. Mm -hmm. When the situation, can you, can you say it when it's right? Can mm -hmm. you say it when it's not right? Mm -hmm. But I remember in my notes, I had wrote textbook, uh, you know, the textbook situation. Mm -hmm. And in this particular lesson, I can see that textbook situation mm -hmm. because the Ark of the Covenant is being brought into the temple and mm -hmm. everybody's giving worship and everybody's giving praise because mm -hmm. it says the people gave thanks. Yeah. And the fact that there's no mention of the praise leader. There's no on, mention come on, come on. of, hey, come on, y'all stand up. Y'all give God the glory and all mm -hmm. of that. Right. The people desired. gave thanks to God. That, as mm -hmm. you said, they desired to go forth and worship in their, in their own senses. Hey man, that's a great point to bring you back to as well. They, this, this is an awesome lesson. And we, and we do have our brother Zach here today uh, sitting in, and we will bring him in here in just a bit here. But I was just thinking about in this lesson, we see that Solomon dedicated the temple. He worshiped, uh, praised in the temple. And then the next thing, the presence of the Lord filled the temple. Amen, amen, amen. And I thought about, you know, again, we got to go and can't forget David mm -hmm. because all this started with a, with a desire he had. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we have something that makes me think about sometimes there are things that we're desiring for our family. Mm -hmm. I'm desiring some things right now on this moment for yeah. my family. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow to see it, but mm -hmm. I believe God. Hallelujah. And I believe God to manifest it in the way that he see fits. But I believe God honors my desire yes. because he looks at my heart. He knows you, that he wants unity in the family. And yes. I began to think about that um, 
He gave us a free will, as Pastor West was speaking a moment ago. Yeah. He's going to violate that will. He gave us a will so he'll see that we will want to and we yes. will uh, actively worship him. Yeah. And worship yeah. is not simply just saying the words. It's yeah. in our actions. Yeah. It's what we do every day, all day. Yeah. And, you know, when I think about the, the what I call the simple things in life, the simple things in life is that we make a choice. Amen. That we're going to serve God today regardless of what's going on. Yeah. That in spite of what other people do, we're going to stay in line with what the word say for us. Yeah. In, yeah. in spite of. And, you know, and I think about how uh, many times in, in the scriptures, it talks about Thanksgiving. And even over in uh, uh, Mark, it, when it talks about moving the mountain, speak to the mountain and be mm-hmm. moved. But before you can conclude that path, you got to, it, it talks about forgiveness. Amen. And there's a necessity to forgive. No matter what, you can't change a person. Neither one of us can. That's right. None on the side of my voice can. But we can change us and line up with the word of God. And and that they used to say, where the bricks fall, that's where they fall. Because we have aligned ourselves with the word of God. And now we're properly positioned so we can thank God. Yeah. Ain't no way to thank him if we we don't, you know, if we're looking for a sign. Outside of where we ought to be. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember a few months ago you were talking about something and you used what has become a common phrase for us today. You said, stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. And, you know, while that is a slang term, if we took it and applied it in our life with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yeah. with our relationship with God the Father, we would find that it would call for us to be totally obedient to the will of God, to stay in the lane. Mm-hmm. To to be able to give God thanks, yeah, because you can't go before God in any condition, mm-hmm. and and to even be able to talk about Him, you can't be in any condition right. to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And so many things that we seem to have once no, known, and I was thinking about this as we were traveling over the freeway as well. We have went away from it, forgotten about it, turned a deaf, deaf ear to it, like it doesn't even matter, mm-hmm. and we wonder. Why things, why things are the way they are. What other choice do they have to be? That's if right. you went away from God, what do you have to depend on? Mm-hmm. What do you have to lean on? What do you have to trust in? And, and we've got so many horrible things that are going on, and people are going back to the place where they're not connected with God, knowing they're not connected with God. That's right. You know, they've gotten caught up in the cares of this world, the ways of this world, and I mean, some of the things I'm saying, it, it doesn't directly relate to this lesson on the one hand, but it's resonated in my spirit because I'm going to be preaching about it. But it does relate because we're looking for blessings. We're looking for promises. We're looking for the God of all gods and the king of all kings and Lord of all lords to show up in our life. But we are serving Satan. And when I say we, I'm talking about the people at large. I'm not including myself except I'm the I'm one here that's crying on behalf of the people. Why can I say that? Because I can t- have turned away from sin. I don't have to sin Amen. sin. I don't have to stay in a place where, where I would uh, receive the, the God's wrath as Solomon is praying for these people that's right. so that they won't uh, experience the condemnation. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible said in Romans 8, chapter, there's therefore now no more condemnation mm-hmm. to him that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Not just that there's not any more condemnation. There's definitely condemnation. Right. There's definitely an eternal end that's damnation and destruction that begins in life while right. the person is still alive. But what God is, is saying in that as he spoke through Paul is if you're in Christ, if you turn to him, if you get in him, if you trust in him, that place that you say when you're doing all that you want, you, you'll give God thanks mm-hmm. in. Why? Because you put it in his hand. That's right. You're, you're doing what God told you to do. It may not look like it's going to come out right. It may mm-hmm. not feel like it's going to come out right. But you're doing what God has given you to do. This is why this subject matter of the people gave thanks to God is so important. Because these people are not taken out of situations of life as you were talking about. That's right. These people are able to thank God while the situations are going on. That's right. Thank him for what? For his covering, for his protection, Mm -hmm. for his provisions, for his revelation, Mm -hmm. for his security, for all the things that God has already done, that God is known for. You know, today we act as though, and and we have been in services, and we see you got to, come on, come on, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You ought to praise the Lord. You know, with all type of things that we're using, trying to get people to give God thanks. The Bible tells us to enter into mm-hmm. his gates. Yes. With thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. If you and I enter into the gates with thanksgiving, there is nobody inside the, the door that's got to prompt you 
to give God thanks. Amen. Because you Amen. you came prepared. You came ready. But today we come with a many preconceived ideas. Yes. And we cannot do that. We've got to hear God. Mm. We gotta hear God. And and another thing I wanna say, we we got to be careful what we listen to and who we listen to. Because many people are led by other things. That's right. So we got to hear God. Uh, I, I want to say this. While I'm very thankful for Brother Zach being here, he will not be speaking to me this morning. Because we pray to work together. Mm -hmm. And as he come in, we're glad that you're here. But we're not going to do that. Amen. Amen. Now on this uh, topic, the people gave thanks to God. I begin to think about that. Also, what Pastor Watson was just saying. You know, it's difficult. It's impossible, really, to praise God while you have it out. While you're uh, experiencing something, when I say experiencing it, I mean while you're molding around in your head over and over and over and over and mm -hmm. over and over and over again. You don't get an opportunity to, to exhale that or mm -hmm. ex exile that. Mm -hmm. If you don't exile that thought, then you're, you're, you won't be able to go into a, a worship, Amen. which is what God is expecting. And so we see here again that uh, Solomon uh, built the temple. Yeah. He placed the ark that held the covenant that God has made with his people in it. Mm -hmm. He dedicated the temple. He prayed for on behalf of the people. And then the uh, the presence of the Lord filled the temple. And the next immediate uh, uh, response is the people worship the yes. Lord. Yes. And I thought about, you know, and it says in our scripture text today Thank that you. they, they uh, fell to their face and, and worship the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and, and it didn't say how many people. It didn't say all the people. Mm -hmm. It said the people. So whoever was there apparently mm -hmm. were the ones. I don't know how many was. I'm not going to try to uh, figure that out. But I thought about the people in unity. Yes. There was unity uh, going on, and they didn't. He didn't have to say get unified, like we hear in our churches today, from the pulpit, from the back door. Mm -hmm. get, we got to get unified. We got to get together, come together, uh, mm -hmm. or, or pray it into the atmosphere. Uh, Lord, let your presence uh, bow to this place. Everybody mm -hmm. come together. We don't have to do that because the people came, and mm -hmm. they were they were uh, expecting something because they were standing there watching, mm -hmm. and they were standing. We don't do that too much today either. <laughs> but they were standing observing Solomon as he made this dedication. And he had he had set the, the atmosphere. He wasn't in the most holies of holies because he had to be able the people had to be able to see him. Right. And, and then he had that place was uh, uh consecrated for the Lord. Yes. And so and I thought about that. But then the, the next thing before I give it over to Elder Lewis, it says after they the the his God's presence filled the temple. The people fell and worshiped the Lord, and yeah. then they made a sacrifice. And yeah. so two things that I wrote down here was, uh, have we mm. opened our temple up to be filled right. with the presence of God? Yeah. And then the other one is, have we made a, a, a holy, acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord for mm. what all that he has done in our lives? Other Lewis. And as Missionary Lewis would say, that's a great place. <laughs> but I want to, I'm going to comment on that, but I want to go back to Pastor Washington for a minute. And when you uh, just said the fact that you what you were saying may not be, you know, part of the lesson. Well, I want to step up to say that I clearly see how everything you just said goes along with the lesson because of the fact that you when you mentioned how people can walk away from God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've heard those analogies before. Of, well, you know, they got to go out there and they got to experience this for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I disagree. Amen. Uh, Amen. You know, they Amen. don't have to. Mm -hmm. They don't have That's because right. mama did it. Daddy did it. That's well, right. daughter and son don't have to experience right. it. What daughter and son can see is that's what I don't want to, that I don't want to have to experience. That's mm -hmm. what they can say. Mm -hmm. And because you, we're talking about the presence of the Lord, how the presence of God fill the temple. See, when you walk away from God, you can't expect to receive the presence of the Lord Amen. in your life. Mm -hmm. Them two mm -hmm. don't go together. And I know for a couple of weeks now, we have all said it in one form or fashion. The blessings and promises is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe God has been putting that in my spirit now because mm -hmm. I've been coming into peak contact with people, you know, uh, the phrase, well, I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, mm -hmm. tell, tell, tell me what that means. And then they yeah. can't tell you. And so it's false doctrine to mm -hmm. allude to people that if you're not 
you know, if you're not saved, if you're not obedient to the word of, to the will of God, and you're not being a disciple, a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. that you can experience everything else that I can experience, or that Pastor mm -hmm. Washington, or that you know, uh, Missionary Lewis can, can experience. Mm -hmm. so. Again, I, I agree. I want to go off it, it's part. a sad thing, but we live in a time that we must distinguish. <coughs> because there, there's a theory, a school of thought that says, because I say that God is God, I got everything that everybody else has that is true in God. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, it manifests. The, Jesus taught like this. He said, you shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Another scripture, he said, except that you abide in me. See, we've got to abide in Christ. Somehow we think and we've got this mindset that we don't have to abide in Christ for the blessings to overtake us. Mm -hmm. When we go back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and all of the other scriptures that follow that up with how God set things in order, and I want to say God set it in order. We can't change it based on because we've got a new theory. Mm -hmm. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's mm -hmm. not changing. This word that we're reading from this morning is thousands of years old. And I don't think we realize that. In, in a time when technology has changed so much in the last 15 or 20 years, and we're going with this new way of thinking and, and desires and all this stuff that says, I don't have to honor God. I don't have to worship mm -hmm. God. I don't have to give thanks to God. Now, mm -hmm. if you ask the person to give thanks, they'll open their mouth and say something. But the greater number of people, their life does not say, I'm thankful to God. Amen. Their lives say, I'm thankful for what I can do. I'm thankful for what somebody else can do. And in some cases, even I'm thankful for what the devil can do. Mm. But it's got to be as unto the Lord. We, we've got to a place in our society where we're acting as though people can be both in and out. And you can't be both in and out. You're either in or you out. And I teach, as I teach you to feed my sheep, there is no gray area. The gray area is out. Do we have to understand that? When you go outside of righteousness, you went to unrighteousness. Outside of godliness, you went to ungodliness. Now, you're not going to expect unrighteous people to praise God. You're not going to expect ungodly people to praise God. Who do you expect to praise God, to thank God, to honor God, to expect from God? It is people who are righteous mm -hmm. according to his word, his will, and his way, not to our standard of righteousness. God's standard far exceed our standard of righteousness. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. But he lets us know what his ways and his thoughts are. Mm -hmm. So, And then he gives us empowerment to do it. So when it comes down to the nitty of the gritty, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Do we choose to serve God or do we choose to serve ourselves? Most often we're not thinking, I'm choosing to serve the devil. But when you serve the devil, that's, it's only good and evil. So if you're not serving God, which is good, then you're going to be serving the devil, which is evil. Notice that G-O-D and G-O-O-D and D-E-B-I-L and E-V-I-L. It is not by accident that it's like that. You, it's either one or the other. But today, most people don't like they realize that. Mm -hmm. And so we don't see people giving thanks. And, and while these praise and worship leaders and whomever else it is, they're, even the pastors many times, they're, they're feeling like they're doing a great job by exhorting the people. And we ought to exhort. But it would be to exhort worship in truth, not just in, in deed or in actions. But in the heart, in the heart. And that really can only resonate in the person if they themselves really want to worship the Lord, mm -hmm. really want to give thanks. And they can't do it. There's so many things coming through my mind. I thought about uh, Isaiah as well as Jesus using some of Isaiah's saying, saying, seeing and not seeing and hearing and not hearing. Mm -hmm. They can't do it if they can't see. They can't do it if they can't hear. Not that God has not given the ability, but because they haven't chosen what God has made available to them. And there's this theory that it doesn't matter. I just want to feel good. I just want to be good. You know, I just want to have good. And, and it, it really doesn't correlate with the word of God. Mm -hmm. God wants the blessing, but the mindset is in the wrong place. He wants to bless, rather, but the mindset is in the wrong place. Amen, amen. amen. And, and as you were saying, Pastor Watson, if your heart is not pure, if it's not turned to God, you know, it tells us, be ye holy for I am holy. Right. There's no way you'll worship him. Right. You can say some words. But worship starts from the heart, right. and it connects to the mind, and then it it, it, it exemplifies itself in our actions. And so, with the wheel of God. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, you know, I think about in order to get to this place where the people gave thanks to God, mm -hmm. and the people meaning us today, 
yeah. give thanks to God, we're going to have to align with his word mm -hmm. and his will and his way. Amen. We can't do it no Amen. other way. Amen. It has to be uh, just like that. Yeah. I mean, if, if there's anything that's sure, that that has to be. Mm -hmm. I think about it, I, I was somewhere yesterday with uh, Maurice and we were, uh, and we were talking and he said, I can't remember exact words he said, but basically the bottom line was I told him that there's nothing certain. Everything is temporary. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know we were buying a base bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, there's nothing certain. Everything is temporary mm -hmm. except God. Except mm -hmm. God. Except God. And I mean everything. And, you know, and, and I think somehow we have forgotten that in our teaching, in our doctrine, and what the scripture has said. We have forgotten that, that everything is triple. So we're trying to hold on to stuff we ain't supposed to be holding on to. Are, are you, when you said that, it reminded me of how we used to walk around the church and we would say to one another, only what you do for Christ shall last. Yes. Mm -hmm. Only what you do for Christ shall last. You're getting caught up in something that's contrary to God and it's, got, it's coming to a halt. And it's got, not going to be a good thing because it's not godly. It's mm -hmm. not the way we glorify God. If we, we really must cry loud and spare not in this hour. I'm thankful for these Old Testament lessons that you don't get at the church no more. That's right. You know, it's, it's very few churches are saying you, you, you need to give thanks to God. Most of our message is about how much money can you get, mm -hmm. how happy can you be, how big can your house be, or whatever the case may be. God wants us to have all of those things, but not outside of him. That's right. Not without him. He wants us to have the blessings and the promises overtaking us. But it begins with our relationship with him. And Amen. we can't go away from it and think it's God that's blessing us. Amen. And before we go over to Elder Lewis, I want to go ahead and read the scriptures. Uh, in Second Chronicles 7, 1 through 9, it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven yeah. and, the, and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord yes. had filled the Lord's house. Thank you, Lord. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Yeah. And the king Solomon, excuse me, and King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen mm -hmm. and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Mm -hmm. And the priests waited on their, on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, yes. which David the king had made to praise the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offering. Because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat of the offerings and the fat. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days. And all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from entering in of Hamath upon the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days. And the feast seven days. Amen. We thank God Amen. for the reading of his word. Of the Lewis. That was a huge celebration. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about the word uh, Pastor Washington just used, and she said theory. Uh, the one thing I'm under, one as one studying music and, and studying music theory, what I'm finding out is that theory is a guide. A theory can be broken. So whatever that theory is, you don't have to stay over there on that side, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm finding out that they says, well, this chord goes with that chord. Well, you can't put that chord with that chord. Well, I'm finding out people are putting that chord that they say can't be put mm -hmm. with those chords so it could be broken. Mm -hmm. But God just gave when you was talking about evil live and then how you turn around backwards and it's mm -hmm. evil. Mm -hmm. And we, when I say we, I'm talking about general, how you can be engrafted or say certain things and not realizing what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the phrase God just brought to my to my head was, well, you know, all good things come to an end. Mm -hmm. That's erroneous. 
Because God don't come to an end. Amen. <laughs> I remember riding in the car one day and I heard, I was listening to a, a message and people were calling in and, and the, 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 the speaker was talking about having encounters with, with God and, and how you live in your life. And this young lady called in and she said, well, she said, it, I just think it, it's kind of boring. She said, I'm saved, but you know, I can't do this and I can't do that. And my life is boring and this and that. And the man said, my dear, you ain't never really truly had an encounter with the Lord. Have you? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, God just now showed me that, you know, all good things come to an end. That's, that's erroneous because when you inside of God and God is in you, that doesn't come to an end. Amen. And then you're positioned <laughs> to give thanks unto the yes. Lord and when you know who he is and who you are in him. You know, I think about how many times we forget those types of things. Um, the things that we have to say what God has said about our lives. Amen. Um, when we do that, not only are we rehearsing the truth into our life, but it connects to our heart, which connects to our mind. Because we're constantly saying what God has said. God said that we are the healed. Yeah. God said that we are the conqueror. God yeah. has made us victorious through Christ Jesus. You know, when we say those things repetitively, we believe in that. It's mm -hmm. kind of like on my job in the uh, corporate America, they used to say that um, you got to buy into it to believe it. Mm -hmm. And what they was essentially saying that no matter what the process was, if you can uh, uh, toil with it and you get an understanding of it and you can find its usability of it and then now you're a believer. Now you can sell it mm -hmm. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it works the same way with the word of God. Once you toil with it and mm -hmm. you get in there and you seek it and you, uh, uh, a revelation from God and you rehearse it by sticking it out of your mouth, saying what God has said about you in your life, and you can sell that to the next person that, that may be that unbeliever or even mm -hmm. that believer that's maybe straddling the fence. Mm -hmm. Because we, you know, it, it all it takes is a smidgen of something to get a person off track. That's the other thing. We think it's got to be something God judge me. I know they ain't had the word go. <laughs> but I want you to know, I mean, huge, enormous, yeah, beyond yeah, what man. we can fathom. And then, in the reality, all it takes is a, just a step right back over that line to be where you need to be through repentance. Yeah. But we keep trying to make a molehill or a little anthill or whatever they call it into something that's, that's bigger than Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that we stay with what God say. And this is why things are not as though they appear. That's the one thing we used to say here all the time. And I still, we, you can hear it if you come visit us here at Feed My Sheep Ministries, Church of God in Christ, every Sunday. But you'll hear it on Wednesday as well. But it, it is to encourage us to not to allow the issues of life. To overtake us. We mm -hmm. are conquerors. So we step on top of those issues. Amen. Amen. And we crumble them. Mm -hmm. With the word of God. Not based mm -hmm. on what we thinking. Not based mm -hmm. on what we feeling. Not based on what somebody else don't say. Mm -hmm. Or even what we all, all said out our own mouth. But by the word of God. I, and I want to add to that. With the word. You got to add the actions. Amen. Because faith without works is dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now. Here's what happens a lot of times. When we say this. Even to ourselves. And I was thinking as you were talking about, we got to, to, to that, that power that is to be used toward others is firstly to be used toward ourselves, mm -hmm. to bring ourselves subject to the word, the will, and the way of God. Yeah. But oftentimes what we're doing is we're allowing the way of the world to dictate to us That's it. the opposite of what the word has told us to do. Mm -hmm. And this is a common character among human beings. So yeah. it's not like... We can say, well, you, and, well, maybe not you, but, maybe not you, but, right. you know, no, no. This is a common character among human beings that we would go with the way of the world instead of what God's word has said. Yes. This is why we have so much chaos, so much havoc in our lives, because we keep trying to work it out ourselves. Yes. We keep trying to do the thing that we think will get us the result that we want. And we have witnessed in the whole of the Old Testament, this is what the children of Israel kept on doing. Yes. And then when they would get out there and they were struggling and even sometimes dying or being killed in warfare, they would turn to the Lord. They would call on the Lord because they knew they could not do it themselves. Mm -hmm. God would hear their cry of sincerity yeah. and he would deliver them. But guess what? They went back and did the same thing. Yeah. They went back and did the same thing. They were literally put in bondage for over 400 years as a people 
God's people mm -hmm. because they kept going back to the same thing. Now, the reason I made mention of this, it would seem like, Sister Teacher, that people today would get that. Mm -hmm. God is the same God. Mm -hmm. There are some things that he do differently in this earth realm, but the wages of sin or the consequences of going against God's word is still the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're still going to experience the curses in your life. Mm -hmm. So why would we not choose the blessing plan? Yeah. And the blessing plan is not complicated at all. It's not even near as complicated as we make life. The blessing plan is obey God, mm -hmm. his word, and the blessing will overtake you. Why would we not choose that plan? Yeah. I began to think earlier this morning about that question. Why would why, why you keep having to tell people the same thing? Why? Is it taking people so long to die to themselves? Why, why, why? And it came to me out of the book of Thessalonians where the scripture says that God will send strong delusion. And we live it today. All these schools of thoughts and these theories that are contrary to God's words, that fight theology, knowing who God is, knowing how he does things and all this. God is so awesome. He reveals himself to us. And we're like, yeah, 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 but this is how I think about it. Yeah, 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 but this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, 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 but this is what I'm going to feel. And because of that, we got, we're in perilous times, in this hour, in our own lives, based on our own choices. Mm -hmm. It's not the devil. You remember several years ago, you, we used to say the devil did that. We, we learned it wasn't the devil. Mm -hmm. We learned the devil don't have that authority over that's us. Right. We mm -hmm. learned that greater is he that is in me than yes. he that is in the world. Yes. So no matter how we look at it based on those things, it comes back to us as an individual. You must choose to obey God's word in light of and in spite of. If you want it to come out, the way God has said, where the blessings of the Lord is upon it, you're going to have to obey God. Because he's already said, if you don't obey him, if you don't hear him, you won't obey him. Mm -hmm. And if you don't obey him, you, you, what you receive is the cursings. He gives many, uh, I think it's 38 <coughs> or something like that. You go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and start on the 14th verse. And from the 14th to the end of that chapter, you find that these are curses that come up on the person because they don't obey God. Mm -hmm. Why do we not believe that today? And it's amazing, these, when these words are spoken, when they're uh, read, people turn a deaf ear mm -hmm. as though it's not talking about them. And so now we have the answer why we got so many people today that don't automatically give God thanks, that don't automatically submit to him, that don't automatically worship him because of their disobedience Many people are experiencing strong delusion sent by God. And I'm going to find that scripture and read it in a few minutes, but I'm going to give it back into your hand because I don't want to take us away from where we're going to. Amen. And, and I, I wanted to uh, hone in on what you just said. You know, the reality is that we can destroy this generational curse yes. of being disobedient towards God. Now we know that this is we are that faith lineage, and we know that all the things that have happened through the history as we read the scriptures. But we also got to bring it right here to home. We can destroy those generational curses. The other thing I thought about as you were saying, uh, Pastor White, they go back to that person, yeah. and that person, that one person. Now I ain't saying it's the only one, but one person can affect the whole household and all everybody. The whole house is in sin. The whole house. Isn't the it? whole house is in, and so we have to be mindful that every single thing we do. Mm -hmm. impact somebody whether they saw it with their naked eye or not so mm -hmm. you may think you in private but you're not that's right because that's right. god can see you and there's still a recompense or reward and what happens is you start to see things dying you may not be it may not be physical death mm -hmm. but it, you'll start seeing your finances die you mm -hmm. start to see your relationships die you start mm -hmm. to see your household uh, uh die there's yeah. no unity in the family and all these things Many of us, if not all of us, can say it's happening. Yes, yes. Because we have committed apostasy against God. What does that mean? We have turned away from God mm -hmm. and begin to uh, to uh, serve or worship other idols, mm -hmm. even if that idol is us. Amen. Amen. And so I think about that. And again, we talk of this topic is the people gave thanks to God, but you can't give thanks to God until you get all this sin out the court. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of it. And so we can break that curse. How do we do that? We start, first of all, we repent. Mm -hmm. And we turn to God to turn away from sin. Mm -hmm. 
Again, as we often say, with intent to never ever go there again. That's right. <laughs> have the right. Mindset. Have the right mindset, mm -hmm. and then we move forward by seeking the Word of God through His Word and in prayer, communion with Him, yes. but not just yes. talking, right? But hearing the Lord speak, yes, and then doing what He say do when He say do it, how He say do it, mm -hmm. and kicking against the prick, against what we think, yes. against yes. what we feel, against what others don't did, mm -hmm. against what others don't said. Because all that's irrelevant. Because it's still going back to us. I have a choice. Amen. I can choose Amen. to ignore all of that. Or Amen. I can choose to embrace it. That's and my choice is to ignore it. And when I say ignore it, I mean to where it don't phase me. That don't mean I can't see. That don't mean I can't hear. But I choose to live in peace. The peace of God. He's given us his peace. Yes. Jesus said when he, when he was getting ready to die, he said, my peace, I leave with you. Yes. Yes. So we have his peace. We just got to allow it to have a free course. This is why we must be endowed with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we have the power. Amen. Amen. You know, so much of what you said is, is just scripturally uh, backed. We find the foundation to the word. But today we went away from the word of God. Yeah. And we've linked to our own understanding. And so we're trying to answer question with how we feel, how we think, and how we see it, and what we want, and all of these things. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes arguing what God wants us to have. That's right. God's first priority is that you love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your might. That means you're not going to go after anything that would run interference with your relationship with him. Yeah. And yet people are not seeing that as a necessity today. I was thinking as you were speaking, and I was thinking about the fact that this, uh, these lessons that we're looking at in this um, quarter talks about acknowledging God and takes us back to the Old Testament. Why is that so important? First of all, because too many people claiming to be New Testament <laughs> saints Amen. without acknowledging God. Yeah. And because they, when they say New Testament saints, they basically say they can do what they want to do. That's right. It don't make any difference. You know, uh, Jesus died for me so I, I can be foot loose and fast and free. And mm -hmm. that is as far from the truth as white is from black. Yeah. But what has happened is we've accepted this bill of goods from the devil. Mm -hmm. So Satan don't have to do anything. I mean, he literally don't have to do anything. If we killing ourselves, if I'm stabbing myself, I don't need you to stab me to kill me. I'm yeah, kill right. myself eventually. Mm -hmm. I'm kill myself eventually because this is my mindset, and we see it all the time. People destroying their own life based on how they think, how they feel, and how they see it. Yeah. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that the Old Testament was written for our example mm -hmm. to get to know God. And how he does things. That's right. How we come up with this new age philosophy, I do not know. And, and then people say, I believe in both the Old and the New Testament. If you believe in the New Testament, you will see in the Gospels that what Jesus taught was predicated on what manifested in the Old Testament. All right. So you wouldn't go away from God. I was thinking earlier also today that someone said, well, if we just do what's in the red. <laughs> Listen, if you did what's in the red... You would be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, still and baptized with fire. All right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it is more difficult to do what's in the red than it is what's in the black. All right. Even though the black spells out for us certain things that we must do and stop doing, the red is cut and dry. All right. What Jesus said he meant and what he meant he said. Amen. And what he did, he Amen. came to reiterate what God the Father had already said. Mm -hmm. So that God would receive the thanksgiving. It's God that told uh, spoke through the psalmist and say, enter into my gates with thanksgiving. Yes. And my course with praise. Be thankful unto me and bless his name. People today are taking that like, I don't have to do that if I don't want to. What, what, why are you here? All right. That would be the question. If you're not willing to receive God's word, no matter what the setting is, is even here as in Sunday school or in uh, discipleship teaching, uh, uh, Wednesday night service or Sunday morning service, if you're not willing to take God's word to make application in your work in your life, why are you here? Mm -hmm. It's unreasonable to think that we could go away from God and receive the blessing of God. But that's mm -hmm. that philosophy that's in the mind today. All right. Where everybody professes to be a Christian. Christians are Christ-like. Mm -hmm. that, that's what that's why they were first called Christians by people who didn't even know Christ. Mm -hmm. They saw yeah. that they were doing the actions that Christ did. While he was in this earth realm. So they call him Christian. They're saying they like Christ. They like that Jesus boy. You know? 
But today, we, we feel like we don't have to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. But we can still call ourselves a Christian. Which is really saying the same thing the pagans are saying. Because we're doing the same thing the pagans are doing. All right. You know, we, we've got to have a mindset change. And there's an expectation that does, is not limited to your clothes. It's not limited to the words that you, that you speak naturally so. But the expectation is based on the word of God. What's holy? God has given us holy for our finances. He's given us holy for our physical body. He's given us holy for our minds. He's given us holy for our relationships. He's given us holy to walk in his power spiritually. So, so why would we be here if we're not going to embrace the holy of God? Because anything less than holy, you don't get it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anything less than holy, that's why he put his Holy Spirit in those who will believe. Because anything less than holy... You can't get the blessings of God to overtake you. Mm -hmm. And yet we live in a time and a place where we're trying to manipulate the scripture to go along with what we think, what mm -hmm. we want, what somebody else said. Well, this is why so many people are dying. This is why the power of God is not being manifested in many churches and certainly not in many people. Mm -hmm. Thank God that we've learned now that we are the church individually Amen. and as well as when we come together collectively. But if the holy don't start in the church individually... There is nothing for that individual to bring to the body of Christ. It's got to be holy. We are one body fit, fitly joined together, but through his power, his spirit, his might, not through our thinkers. In fact, our thinkers often cause us to separate. That's true. And it should not be that way. Mm -hmm. And so here, all this brings us back to that we ought to be th giving thanks to God. But how many people got up this morning with the issues of life? All right. And they didn't think about God. There are people that were getting ready to go to church and they, they're cursing somebody out because they tore their pantyhose. They're not thinking about God. You can't keep your mind on God and do those type of things. There has to be a mindset change. You were speaking a while ago, uh, Sister Lewis. First thing that came to my mind is repentance. Yeah. You were describing it, but I was thinking about the word. Mm. People are not repenting today. Repentance is a tool given us to stay in right standing with God. Amen. But people are not repenting. Now, people are confessing. Mm -hmm. I did this, I did that. We got more confession groups. You know, you call them by different names, but they're confession groups all around the world. You can go anywhere and find a confession group. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to find a repentance group. Yes, sir. Because people are not repenting. They're not having a mindset change. And we keep using the word mindset. That that vacillating between back and forth. Well, I don't know today, I don't know tomorrow, I don't know. No. A mindset is you make a choice that's based on the word of God and you stay with it that's and right. let God do what he does. No matter what comes, what challenges comes, what situation comes. And that way you can be thankful in that place. Why? Because you put it in God's hand. That's right. You already know it's done. I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. I know what it seems like. But I'm trusting God to bring me through this to his glory. However he wants to bring me through it. See, even in that you can't have preconceived ideas. Mm -hmm. You can't have preconceived ideas. You cannot have preconceived ideas. It's God to your glory. I make myself available to you. And see, you may think you're supposed to go up the high side of the mountain to get to the top of the hill. And God may tell you or lead you down around the side of the mountain, down through the valley. Like David said, yay, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yeah. See, I can still worship you in this place. Mm -hmm. It's a valley place. There's no water here. There's, there's no life here. It's dark here. In the shadow of death. Yeah. But I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. So I'm going to worship you anyhow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you praise in it. Amen. It's not going to be a fictitious praise. It's going to be because I see stand in you, I have the victory. People don't worship the Lord giving him thanks mm -hmm. because they don't feel they have nothing to thank him for. Yes, right. They think they make it their own way. And sometimes we can be fooled with that, you know? Mm -hmm. These high, these titles, these positions, this power that we seek in this earth realm will cause us to go away from thanking God because we think we're doing it our own self. Mm -hmm. Not realize that he's given us the strength. He's opened up the door. He's moved on the hearts of the people, you know, and he's keeping us, mm -hmm. giving us opportunity, another chance in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I was, Pastor Watson was talking about the Old Testament and the New Testament. I was thinking some of the very same things. And you know how we hear people say today, uh, oh, well, that's my day job. 
mm-hmm. you know, and they want to vacillate back and forth. All you right, know? come on. And the fact that understanding, you know, the scripture tells us that God changes not. Mm-hmm. So you have the Old Testament. At what point did God say, you know what? I ain't going to do it this way no more. We're going to mm-hmm. do it this way. All right. mm-hmm. God's still the same. The it's scripture same. tells us that. So as you say, why would we get in our own mind that God would accept us doing something different? Mm-hmm. And then I want I want I was looking at the how in verse 5 uh, King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen all right. and 120,000 sheep mm-hmm. so that the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And mm-hmm. the first thing that came to my mind, as you say, Pastor Washington, when people say, oh, it don't take all that. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of sacrifices. Yes, and was. they were saying, they broke it down to uh, how many uh, had to be sacrificed in so many, it, it, they broke it down into the time frame that you mm-hmm. had to sacrifice so many in so many hours or whatever, and this is what it would mm-hmm. take. And this is what it took for them. Mm-hmm. So for you to say, well, it don't take all of that, you know, again, if I decide I'm going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray, mm-hmm. that's what God told me to do. That's what mm-hmm. I desire to do. Let's go back to the title again. It says... The people gave thanks to God. Mm -hmm. They desired on their own terms. They desired, well, based on what was going on, they desired. They didn't have to be pumped and primed. So it's not for other individuals to say, well, it don't take all of that. Well, do we say that at work all the time? It don't take all of that. But how many training classes do we end up going to? Well, it takes all of that for us Mm -hmm. to get that. Uh, You know, the things that go on in the world, we, we don't say, well, it don't take all of that. We get right along with it. That's right. So when it comes to praising and worship, worshiping God and being in his presence, it takes whatever it takes to get into his presence. Mm-hmm. Amen. Which was my thought. It take a wheel. So, <laughs> you know, I think about people that say that stuff, that, that lets you know that they ain't in the place. Mm-hmm. That's right. They ain't in the place. And so we have to be careful about who we listen to, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I, one of the things that uh, Pastor Washington taught us some time ago, and I still use today, I don't let no anything or anybody infiltrate my space. That's right. Because I want peace to reside in my space. Amen. And Amen. even if that means that sometimes I got to, uh, as they say today, suck it up. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to apologize or uh, say I'm sorry on behalf of all this because I don't want to be here. Amen. I want to live in peace. Amen. Amen. And that don't necessarily mean I was wrong, but it also Amen. don't necessarily mean I was right. Right. The bottom line is a situation, and we to get on to the other side, mm-hmm. somebody, mm-hmm. if not both people or however many people, mm-hmm. are going to have to make a decision for God we live, for God we die. Mm-hmm. And I begin right. to think about in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, Know this also, that in the last days, in my scripture, <laughs> the time yes. shall come, for men should be lovers of their own selves. Yes. We can stop right there. All right. Because if we ain't seen that in this 21st century, I don't know what we've seen. We've seen it. But it go on. Yeah. It says covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, yeah. disobedient to parents, yeah. unthankful, yeah. unholy, yeah. without natural affection, truth breakers, mm-hmm. false accusers, incontent, fierce, mm-hmm. despiser of those that are good, mm-hmm. traitors, uh, petty, high minded. Lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, yeah. but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. So these mm-hmm. let us know. God sent a word. So let mm-hmm. us know to turn away from all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's why I told you we don't have we can break the curses. If it was found in your family, if your mother or your father did it, mm-hmm. and it was contrary to the word of God, you as the child don't have to uh, to, to emulate what they did. That's right. That don't mean you disrespect them as your parents. Because the Bible tells us to honor thy mother and thy father that your days may be long. Mm-hmm. So we can still stay in accordance with the word of God. And that means obey God. Mm-hmm. We got to do what God says in, in spite of what position we hold. Position mm-hmm. means work. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Sometimes, somehow today, we think it, it means that we both are, we the big uh, cheese, you know. Yeah. I'm, I, I tied them shoes. I pulled those pants up. I made this shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It ain't about us. It's about God and serving him. Yeah. And he told us over in Acts 1 and 8, it says, after the Holy Ghost have come upon you, you should yeah. be witness unto me, unto who? Unto God. 
Yeah. And then he tells us where? In Jerusalem, that's at home. Mm -hmm. In Judea, that's in, the, in your community. In Samaria, that's in the, uh, all around your city. And in, in the uttermost place, that's everywhere you go. So he covered Amen. every place. Amen. I, I want to say this, Sister Lewis. Not only did he tell us where, but he told us who by telling us where. Yeah, amen. In your home. Yes. Right there in your home. That's yes. where you start. You start in your home. Yes. In your community. That's where you start. Amen. To skip outside of your home. See, today we're traveling miles, going places and doing things. So we're like, we can go 25 miles from here yes. and we can serve over there. But if you're not serving in your home, you're not serving God. Amen. If you're not serving in your community, you're not serving God. Mm -hmm. So it starts there. The Jerusalem that Jesus was talking about was right there where they were. That's right. That's where they had to get started at. We keep trying to go somewhere else. We're even today we're living. We don't we don't have family no more. We mm -hmm. have Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we don't have friends no more. We have a, a metaphors of friends, six hundred mm -hmm. and some, two hundred and some, whatever. People, and, but when the issues of life come, we have nobody. That's right. Because we haven't done it God's way. We're mm -hmm. we're. Connecting with inanimate objects, with things that are contrary to God, trying to mm -hmm. have what we're supposed to have. We got to have all kind of tools that are used within marriages, all type of things that are used that separate the marriage from being who God said the marriage should be. That's right. All types of businesses that uh, allow you to borrow money that separate you from trusting God mm -hmm. for every need to be met. We got all, we, it, these are evil inventions. All right, now. What makes them evil? Because they separate you from trusting God. Yes. Amen. And you don't thank him because you don't trust him. Yes, yes. See, it, you, you would only thank God after, after you see what he's done in your life for real. Mm -hmm. After you see that his word works for real, then you thank him. I don't have to go to the to the ace, whatever they call mm -hmm. the place, the ace place. Uh, I don't have <laughs> to go there. I don't have to go to... Of things that are ungodly because I trust God's word. The Bible tells us in Psalms, the first chapter, that blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. But now, many people will start talking about that and they'll point the finger at who you are talking to and not talking to. The, the flip side of the counsel of the ungodly is to walk in the counsel of the godly. Amen. But today we don't believe in walking in the counsel of the godly. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing. It's not coming out right. And we're still trying to lead ourselves. Mm -hmm. Or God forbid, go to Facebook and put your, your hypothetics out there. Mm -hmm. You need some godly counsel. And you need direct counsel. You know, if you really want to hear from God, you're going to go to him. But if you can't get to him for yourself, you're going to go to somebody you know that can get to him. And mm -hmm. you will listen to what they say and you will take their wise counsel. Mm -hmm. We don't live in that day anymore. That's right. We don't live in that day. But that, as Sister Lewis has said many times, we don't have to be in that place. That's right. We can make a decision. We don't live in a day when it's prevalent, but that doesn't mean that each of us individually can't make the choice to do it. Right. Right yeah. now. To live holy and acceptable mm -hmm. unto God. Repent and be ye saved. Amen. Be Amen. delivered out of that place. You don't have to be in that place. But the, the, the saved place is going to be where you're following God's word. Yeah. So when it comes time for a divorce, because... You didn't quit trying in your relationship. Mm -hmm. You got to go with what the word of God said. If, if it doesn't, if the, the situation doesn't line up with what the word of God said, you can't get divorced. All right. People have a problem with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're following God, you're following God. That's right. It ain't about you. Mm -hmm. It's about what God has said. You have to make a decision based on the word of God, not a flesh decision. It's going to take you away from God. It's going to take you into the ditch, into the, right. the desperate place. But if you make the decision based on the word of God, and place it in his hand. Let him lead you. Mm -hmm. And it'll be all right. Because it's all right in him every time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. I, I'm going to just yield my, my space. I'm not going to say anything else. As we come close to the closing, you've got about three minutes. Uh, <laughs> hey Amen. I just really, again, thank God. Uh, many of you on the sound of, of our voices may think that we have not been talking about the people gave thanks to God. But we we have uh, shared with you life experiences and how to, based on the word of God, to get to this place where That's the right. people of God can give thanks unto God. Yeah. True worship. Yeah. And, 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 and word in true worship in our spirit true worship in our actions yeah. you know and the greatest way is to go back to where all the hands the scriptures are hands on love yeah. the love thy God with all thy heart all thy mind all thy soul all thy might and love thy neighbor as thyself if we yeah. can uh, uh, first of all we repent and turn to God yeah. and embrace that 
Yes. We fulfill the whole of the scripture. Amen. But what we keep trying to do is make it our way based on what we think. Mm -hmm. But to get to this place where the people give thanks unto God, mm -hmm. we got to do it God's way. Amen. There is no other way. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes. And there is a, a recompense or reward for the unholy mm -hmm. as it well as for those that are holy. Mm -hmm. I want to be on the holy side. How about you? Amen. 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 And now let's thank God for his word today. If I if leave you with these three things. One, know that God is yet faithful. Yes, he is. Amen. He will never fail us nor forsake us. Thank he you. is yet faithful. In spite of what it looked like to you, don't let your naked eye. That's right. Make that determination in your heart. Right. Thank hear you. what God say. Hear the hear God's word. Mm -hmm. As if if you read into his Bible, I would admonish you if you don't have a written Bible to get you one. Because life just comes up off the pages, mm -hmm. unlike it does to the computer. Mm -hmm. And then two, remember that you your your temple needs to be filled with the presence of God. Yes. Thank you. So you must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then three, make a sacrifice. Give your very best. Mm -hmm. And ask the Lord to help you along the way. Amen. He loves you. We ought to give him thanks. I Amen. thank you for joining us here today for this International Sunday School lesson. Before we conclude, we want to uh, give Elder Lewis an uh, uh, opportunity to say a word and to close it out with it's, prayer. It's all been said. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What, we want to remind you also that you can join us online at www.fmsmgospelnetwork.org. That is www.fmsmgospelnetwork.org. And Sister... Lewis has some other things she wants to share with you as far as uh, how to get connect with us. Amen. Then you can also send your prayer request to fmsmchurch at gmail.com. Also, join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our International Sunday School lesson at 11 o'clock for our morning worship. Every mm -hmm. Wednesday, DDP, Discipleship Development Program, this is where you have an opportunity to ask your questions, learn a more intimate, uh, get, uh, develop a more intimate relationship with the Lord through His Word. We yeah. meet at 7.15 for prayer. Go right into our subject matter at 7.30. And uh, there are many other occasions. But what I want to say, go back to fmsmgospelnetwork.org and you can find all of that and more. Plus, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, give into to me, so into this ministry. We need your help. We want to continue to be available to you and others. And so there's an app at, uh, located on the screen called GiveLify. If you go there, you can make your contribution to this ministry, and we pray the rest of the Lord upon you. Mm -hmm. And tell us to come back with you next week. Amen, and God bless you. We love you. Love you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord.